Oh, look who came up in here in a good mood when she came in with a little attitude, a little funky attitude. Okay, can I say something? Yeah, so yesterday I went to my mom's house, went to my parents' house, and I got my mom a present, and it was two dozen raw oysters. And they were really good, right? Really so, good. So I was hyped. I was like, oh, oh. She asked oh, if you were hyped. Oh. No. First of all, okay. So I was hyped, right? And I was like, oh. Oh, so I was like, Constantly. okay, no, I was like, oh, so I was like, okay, I'm gonna sing you 50 cents happy birthday song because when that song came out, I was very like weirded out because my mom knew the words and I was like, this is not, okay, like we're not doing this. So anyway, that being said- You don't think I'm current and fly? Anyway, that, well, don't say fly. Like that's one, that's well, issue number one. In my <laughs> world, fly is fly. Right, in your world. So well, anyway- I okay, live in my world. I understand that, but you don't also know it's how you treat. So my point is, I is that I went, I went over, you live like down the street. So- I, I don't want to be in your street. Okay, anyway, so I was like, oh, so I was like, mm. Go shorty, it's your birthday. And then I was like, oh, I could do the remix. I could, I was like, you want 50 Cent version or do you want Mary J. Blige 50 Cent beat version? And she was like, I don't know, I don't even care. And you know what it reminds me of? My sixth birthday. I spell it differently. Ernie and Bert? No. What? My sixth birthday when I got in trouble because um, I went to Chuck E. Cheese and people weren't listening to me. Uh <laughs> Because Nobody would have been your friend then. That was dreadful. It that was not was dreadful. dreadful. It was not dreadful. Here's what happened, right? So Chuck E. Cheese, I knew the Chuck, I knew the inside of Chuck E. Cheese. I knew the inside of the Chuck E. Cheese in Arlington, Texas, like the back of my hand, right? Okay. So I was like, I was like, boom, it's my birthday. Okay. I don't even think it was December. It was the I used to give you half birthday. No, but it wasn't in the summer. It was like school. Like I was in school. You don't go to school in December? Not December 30th. Anyway, that's not even the point. The point is, I was like, all right, boom. So we all went Chuck E. Cheese. Everybody had their little coins to put in right, the Right, I had my special everything. dress on. I was looking real poly cute. Polly Flinders. I used to wear Polly Flinders Jesus. dresses. Terrible. Anyway, so I was like, yo, let me show y'all how to do this. Like, there's a way that y'all can do this, you know, to get the full Chuck E. Cheese experience. And they was like, whatever, everybody, we're going to do what we want. And I was like, first of all, it's my birthday. <laughs> my birthday. And she started screaming at these kids. And I. Why you? Why you not listening? Why you not listening? The cake and everything, why you not getting listening, everything set up. I turned around and saw my daughter ordering these little kids around. And they were like. And I uh -huh. walked over to her and I said, Imani, this is not how one treats one's guests. And she Some started. Some of the people I didn't even invite. You invited friends. That, your friends kids. I don't, I don't know who these people are. Yet again. And she wouldn't stop. She wouldn't stop. So someone asked me a moment ago, how did I discipline Imani when she was little? So we can move I on. Brought her over topic, so and I gave her one topic. smack uh -uh, on her leg. Uh -uh, one uh -uh, just like uh -uh. that. And she, and she did that. Uh -uh. And I said, and she started crying. And I said, come and sit on my lap. You know what? Sit on my lap until you this. finish crying. But you cannot treat your guests this way. This is a bad thing to do. So that being so said, how was you acting yesterday? I was look. I broke it until down. You're finished. I dropped and it. And then when she finished, I got my eagle on. She was very ungrateful. Thank so, you for the happy birthdays. You see how you ignore me? Were you saying something? Yes, I. You know what? <laughs> you know what? Nah. Excuse me. You are. Oh, you know what? Sherry's how old? How old stuff. are you? Guess how old I am. I know how. Oh, sorry. I know. Idris, how old is, is she? I'm going to guess 68. Very good. Yeah, she's 68. And can I just say something real quick? Black don't crack. There are a lot of people out here. Asian don't raise him. He looks 50. What? Asian don't raise That's raisin. the other side. Asia don't raise and Black don't crack. I got it all up in here. It's like rum raisin ice cream. You know the Jamaicans? No. The, uh -uh. the, the uh -uh. most favorite ice cream that, that Jamaicans. Rum raisin is good though. I don't like rum raisin. Is it butter pecan? It's the number vanilla. Vanilla is like my favorite ice cream. Vanilla's vanilla vanilla is so good. The Briars, like with oh the little God. black dots Natural. in it, is so good. Okay, yeah. listen, Sharon James, I see you, girl, but you know what? Imani was a boss from then. Imani I, was I, trying to rule people. That's a little skinny child with little pigtails trying to tell people what to do. I'm like, whatever. Stop. I was like, whatever. Y'all doing it wrong. Oh, so this is what I was saying. What was I talking about? 
<laughs> you I don't forgot. know what you were talking about? You were talking about Chuck, Chuck E. Cheese and, know, and being a that. boss and balling. I was not talking about balling. But I was talking about ice Oh, cream. this is what I was, okay, this is what I was talking you about. You know, Devon House in Kingston. Devon House in Kingston oh, has the best rum raisin ice cream if you like rum raisin. Kingston, Jamaica. There's like, I went, I, when I was in Brooklyn, like back when I used to live in New York, there was this place that was like, it was like a West Indian shop and they made this like distinct like West Indian ice cream flavors. And I don't must remember. Have been rum raisin. I mean, yeah, there was rum raisin, but I never knew that rum raisin was like, I just liked rum raisin as a kid. Rum raisin is the thing in Jamaica. It's like they're, like it's flowing through their But veins. my dad used to get me rum raisin. You were, was like, I like butter pecan. I was like, oh. Well, he was introduced to rum raisin by whom? The Jamaicans and my by family. Him. Anyway. Happy birthday to me. Birthday. Happy <sighs> Idris and this doctor guy yeah. MD shirt. That's Brandon. Who yeah. You? So you're Doctor Guy, MD. Yeah. Okay. Me, meanwhile, Idris don't even like blood. <laughs> so I like blood either. I mean, but I'll deal with it. Like mm -hmm. you know, we can clean it up so Not I can really see what's good. Not everybody has to be a cut doctor. Sharon exactly. James says rum and raisin is awesome. Truly Caribbean. Look at all the people wishing me happy birthday. Demario Bell, who was here last week, is like, "What's up, Demario? I don't know you, but you you ask like really good questions, so thank you." Mm -hmm. Hold on, let's see, let's see how, let's see, you know how many um likes and stuff what? my mom's birthday post got. Look at this, thirty six thousand six hundred and sixty nine y'all liked. You know what? And I'm gonna just uh, and yo and like four hundred comments. You know what? Uh, Deeper. I'm gonna tell you right now. Okay, it's your birthday. You can feel yourself, but I don't really understand how you gonna come up on my account and like just take over. <laughs> From whose body did you spring? From whose loins did you come? Whatever. Who? Oh, but you know what? This is what I was gonna tell you. You know who else's birthday is today? Mm. Dave Chappelle. Dave Ch today's Dave Chappelle's birthday, and then there's somebody else. I love birthday. Dave Chappelle. Was Be Beanie Man's birthday was yesterday? Yesterday. Yeah. I wish I could. I saw the party he had at his house. They had cupcakes. You it know whose good. birthday is tomorrow? Oh, and Ava, Ava, um, Brene? yeah, it's her birthday. All right, today. It's a, and that right. makes Your sense because y'all look, y'all always got the same look. And Trey face. said Hillman, a sister I worked with at NBC out here. In Trey, Germany. Trey said it's her birthday too. And there were three people who I saw on this whole listing of mm -hmm. Happy Birthday, Miss Paula. Um, three other, Hi, Diane. three other birthday twins. Okay. Who's Diane? Diane. Which Diane? Diane married to Jerome. Oh, my sister-in-law. Yeah. Well, I have a cousin Hi, Diane. named Diane too. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm talking about- I'm That's talking Diane about, Madison. I'm talking about Diane in New Orleans. Okay. Hey, Diane. Hi. Okay. So- haagen uh, is the best ice cream. Um, yes, it is. Okay. haagen rum vanilla. raisin is the best. Okay. Maybe. Briar's vanilla is the best. Though. Charisse. Oh, so can I Toyle say that I really don't says like her dad's birthday was yesterday. Guess whose birthday is tomorrow? Happy birthday to your dad. Mine. I'm just kidding. You're lying. <laughs> whose birthday is tomorrow? My dad. Oh yeah, grandpa's birthday is tomorrow, which under which explains why y'all act so he like said this. That I he told me all my life that I was the best birthday present he ever received. And then you didn't say the same thing. Well, it's how could funny. I? He was already born and whatever. Growed up. Okay. 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 So, mm -hmm. what what should we talk about? First of all, there's a lot of stuff that that has gone on. Well, yo, you heard about Kelly Ann Conway? I told you. <laughs> you know what? I, but that child, her daughter, is begging to like get help because both parents. I mean, both parents. I'm not gonna are, say that I didn't chuckle, but I chuckled. You know oh, what? what's up, Zone? Now, sister-in-law. Oh, I love you too. Yeah. Um, so what's up, Zona? But that's bad when you have two parents who are on opposite ends of the political spectrum. Oh, they're not. Well, I know they're Republicans, Republicans, but George Conway is a never Trump Republican. And I mean, whatever. That's his business. And the other one is up Trump. Kelly and Conway look crazy though on the face. Yeah. She looked like. Yeah, she's scary. <laughs> she looked like she on it's all the time. Like, she probably oh, is because she's so skinny and drawn. I know. I'm like, Ugh. she's drawn. But I think that she, I think she's supposed to speak Wednesday night. I think she's like going to 
you know, that man has rolled out every person in his family. Because I guess half the presenters are his family. I, I, I think like, everybody oh, else is going loser. like, you know. Yeah, like I'm not even. And they had they have Republicans at the DNC. Like, hey, what's up? It's Do you me. know what Wolf Bane is? Um, who? Wolf Bane. You know Wolf Bane? That's a person? Or is that like an energy? No. Because that sounds like did, my Wolf Bane is hot. <laughs> did today. you used to watch um, <laughs> Monster Pictures? You did all the time. Monster Bane, like Wolf. Bane. Wolf sorry, Wolf Bane. Wolf, is that like Wolf, werewolf? It's like kryptonite to Superman. What's a wolf bane? bane? It's a herb. It's Wolf Bane. So Wolf Bane oh keeps. I'm not Wolf Bane keeps werewolves away. And what I'm saying is that the I herb. think I think that <laughs> uh, the Republicans who are trying to be reelected all are wearing Wolf Bane. Okay. So, so tonight, competing with us right now is the uh, that gathering. First of all, Alicia, I never heard of Wolf Bane, and you just agree with my mom because you're trying to irritate no, me. No, it's so true. I never heard it before. It's true. Sherry Bellamy. You just agree hey, with Sherry, your grandma. High school it. buddy. Uh, Kellyanne was never Trump until he hired her. Okay. Well, when you know what that's called. Being stupid. Mm -hmm. It starts with an H and ends with an O. A uh hoe? -huh. Okay. Uh, uh, so what do we want to talk about today? Okay, so um, here's a question because, you know, oh, this is what I was saying. This is what I was saying before, before you interrupted me. Okay. Hi, Deb. Okay, listen, this is what I was going to tell you. So I have friends, like, I will proudly proclaim how old I am. I'm almost 45. My mom is 68. Like, I have a friend and she was like, well, how old are you? How old are you? So here's the thing. So my friend was, and this is like my best friend. And she was like, well, you know, I don't really like saying my age, you know, to people right. because th what is she, what was she saying? She you was said, saying no, like, she doesn't want to act that age. Yeah. Like she doesn't want to act that age. And I'm like, well, I'm almost 45, but I'm like, I feel like I just kind of turned 17 in my head. So I have a surprise. Also, hold on. So hold, no, hold that thought, hold that thought. So day. mom, how do you feel about, you know, like I'm 45, I'm out here in these streets looking good. Uh, uh, uh. Um, you, but you know, I, I expect you to look good. It runs in the family. I mean, of course, we but, hold up well. but I also have a little help. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, look, watch my, watch my uh, forehead. I got Botox, right? I got Botox and I got a little bit of fillers because, you know, like I, you know, like I, I'm on the thin side and so I don't want my face to look like Kelly Ann Conway's like, uh, right? Like it's sliding off my face. How do you, I'm, not, I'm not big about that. You're not, you're not, not about big, that. Like, I'm not, I'm not big I mean, you've never surgery. done it. I've it's never not plastic done it. surgery. Well, it's, whatever it's, the fillers is, the squishing stuff in your face, the plumping up the face, the lips, the whatever. Okay. I just think that, so... My husband, as you know, for many, many, and Who many is that? years. You mean my you mean my dad? Your dad. Okay. He was a makeup film and artist. television makeup artist. And he was Tom Broca's makeup artist for 12 years. Hold oh, on. Thanks, Rob Rob 17. And during that, we then, do look terrific. Thank uh, you. And you look terrific too. Thank you. Oh, there's Shanique. Hi, Shanique. So uh -huh. um, no, my oh, friend Shanique. Oh, I was no, like, no. oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> so she's from uh, the Virgin Islands. So my husband worked at NBC for years as the lead prosthetic makeup artist. So he would do on the SNL. big ears or Saturday Night Live. He'd do the big ears and noses. He and put a prune stuff. on what's the name forehead to be um Nev uh what's his name? From the Neville Brothers. Aaron Neville. <laughs> he took a prune and well, stuck it to like, I forgot the black um, SNL cast member, but like he put it on his head and then like they, he painted over it. Yeah. And then he was like, he was um, Aaron Neville. With but him. he was also, he did them, he did makeup on Malcolm X and Boomerang. So, yes. so when Eddie Murphy lifted the sheet back and saw Halle Berry's no, not Halle Berry. Lila Roshan's Lila toes. Roshan's gnarled toes. Roosevelt made those toes. Okay, quick though. If you guys watch Boomerang and you watch the scene, Lila Roshan is on her side, right? Mm -hmm. Like this. And when he pulls the-, oh, the continuity. Right her, right, her feet are like this. Um, I was like, ew. But also quick fun fact, Eddie Murphy had his own makeup artist. So my dad never did Eddie Murphy's makeup. He never did. And I just want to say- Eddie But he Murphy did Grace really Jones. Like, he did do Grace Jones. But I just want to say Eddie Murphy's eyebrows well, were really like a little extra. They, 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 were, they were kind they of were too, they were too- Yeah, it was a little shaped. weird. And his whole escrow situation. Anyway, go ahead. But I love Grace Jones. Well, I mean, my fellow Jamaican. I mean, yeah. Did you know Grace Jones grew up in Syracuse? 
I did know that. I did know that. Anyway, anyway you're going to claim Syracuse now? I born, was born in Syracuse, well, New York. Everything that you've put out there says you're from Harlem. First of all, I, we, okay, I'm from Harlem. You left. You, first of all, you I'm moved up to Syracuse. From then you Harlem. left. I went to graduate school in Syracuse. Right, exactly. And, and I then, met your and then, bio dad. And then, Okay, anyway, what anyway, were you, what were you saying? So my was a point about oh. that is that Your my husband. husband said to me years and years and years ago, he said, baby, you don't ever need to do any of that because I can see through all the makeup, all the filler, all the whatever, and I just like you to be a natural beauty. Mm -hmm. That's nice. But you know what? When you get filler, like it actually helps. <laughs> And like it kind of builds up over time. You're a little only bit. 44 and a half years old. I'm 45 and three, 44 and three fourths. And listen, I'm not trying to look different. I'm not trying to, you know, come out here with a new nose. Like, ah, oh, what's up? Nah, like oh, my nose is cool. Yes, it does look like a raisin. Oh. We're not saying that. We are not even. Idris, that. you are my child. Is you it ready what? for me to do the surprise? Oh yeah, what's up with your surprise? So last night, okay, when I was at home, here's a story. And my daughter was. Oh, hold on. Dancing. What's up? What's up, Phil? What's up, Philip Cook? Hey, Philip Cook. My vassal brother. Okay, go ahead. So, Imani and Idris came with my two dozen raw oysters, which was scrumptious. They were so good. And then she keeps dancing all around and she's just like jugging and, you know, the whole jugging. time. Jugging. That's the move, jugging. I don't know what that means. Go ahead. You have to listen. You need to get in close touch with your culture. Jugging? Mom. Jug. Culture. It's jug, not jug. Jugging. Jug jugging. What is that? That's not what I was doing. <laughs> First of all, I, mean, I was. Kind of <laughs> you were kind of jugging. So anyway, my knee doesn't she kept hurt no dancing more, so and I dancing get up and dancing. Now. And I asked her, "Have you had some marijuana today?" Um, no, I didn't. And you see how shady you're trying to be. Yeah. I was in a good and, mood because it was your birthday. I'm trying to bless your world. And but she was wanting to like just start dancing. I, I who had been sleeping moments before they came in. All right. And I was eating my um, oysters. On the half show mm, that and I got. My surprise is that I sent you a playlist so that at, no, the, I very, saw it. at the very end you can dance. <sighs> no, I and know. I will. I mean, but let's show see what's you on up. these songs. I'm going to show you up. Rising to the top, footsteps in the dark. Mm. People make the world go round. Mm, God it. till it's gone. That's, love, love, love. Between the era. sheets. That's era music. Where's Stevie Wonder in that list? As. Okay, we can do as. There's some Chaka Khan. Love TKO Breezing. I mean, these songs are great. They're just not like Get It Hype, It's Your Birthday song. All right, well, then you find a Get It Hype, It's Your Birthday I song. I already found one. Hooked by Mary J. Blige, who uses a 50 Cent beat. Well, I like the 50 cent. right? Yeah. I'm saying, hold on. I'm a, I'm a I don't right know now. how I am into 50 Cent. You were singing um, Go Shorty, It's Your Birthday. Before. Well, that's, that's an iconic song. Whatever, yeah. Anyway, listen. So what we want to see a dance off between Paul and Imani. You're gonna see it here. No, I'm not doing that because you, yeah, you know, because you didn't appreciate my dances last she, time. So when I we mean, were when she was really little, when she was maybe four, and we used to have parties at our house in Arlington, Texas, with um, Deborah no, Martin, I, I was five and older, and Kevin Merida. You all know Kevin Merida. He's the brother who runs the Undefeated. He's my boy, and uh, Deborah Martin and uh, Rochelle Riley and Rita Parson and well, okay, Mom, the story. Deborah Dennis. All right. So anyway, we'd be at our house jamming, and we would put on the time, and it would be oh, the quick, walk. Quick story. The walk. Quick story. The walk. Why do Why do I like to to dress mostly scantily clad? Because my mom used to get me these shirts, right? And so when the time came out, that's my pa my patience. My parents just listened to the time and Rick James, and so I was and like Prince. six, right? And Prince. So I was so I was like, what's a camisole? Because Morris they always talking about camisole. My mom was like, oh, it's like the shirt you got on. I was like, oh. <laughs> See, that's a good. And uh, that's freaking. Anyway. So when uh, that song came on, the walk, 
And they Monty say, would run out into the middle of the dance floor in the middle of our party. Would say, any walkers in the house? And she went out because she's a what? I'm a my Walker. last name is Walker. That's why. Okay, here's a question from Clay. Are we going to answer any questions? Yes, is right. there's a question on the screen. Okay. By Clay Clay or Clee Clee. If you were forced to choose, would you take four more years of COVID-19 or four more years of um, that man, the Trump virus? COVID-19. Basically. Yeah. I'd rather be quarantined in the house than hear his voice, see his face, look at his pruny lips, anything Anything he looked like but a to deal with him, he anymore. looked like a, a reanimated tumor, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> he does, okay. he does like he has that the cult. Like, if you've ever seen like a, like a biopsy of like a, a like cancerous like growth, it's like that color. Wow, yeah, it's gross, but that's what he looks like. Like, that's his coloring, kind of like oh, see, Clee Clee is Cleon. Oh, what's up, Cleon? Cleon. What's up, my brother from the Bronx? I was like, Cle -cle. Another one of my best I was like, boys. who is that? What's this guy? Um, okay, question is, right? All who right. put love our President Trump? Rob, Rob. You know what? You got to go somewhere. Sorry. No. And he put MAGA. Who? You know what? Uh-uh. Who are you? You got you're to, about get to get deleted. We, we gonna We're get... not doing all of that. Rob, Rob 127, you got to get that out of here. I'm you not even playing if with you, you. If you're joking, then just don't, you know, guess you all are perfect. We're not. Well, whatever. now we're gonna okay, block yeah, you. I don't, I'm not. I'm not I'm because you. okay. I'd anyway, I, am. I mean, I'm not perfect, but compared, I'm, I'm well, not. I'm not to about whoever to, um, Rob Rob is talking about. Yeah, I'm not. Whatever. So go live your life. Somebody, um, wait. Somebody had sent me a question earlier. I gotta find it. Well, yeah. So you all ask questions because we will. Somebody asked, "How is Idris doing tonight?" Oh yeah. What's up, Idris? I'm tired. Because it's, you be going to sleep, tired. you be going to sleep like mad late. And I told you, like, I, you be like, I stayed up till one, two in the morning. I'm like, and so last week, somebody asked if Idris had a girlfriend. And this is where grandma, okay, steps okay, in. you know, before you step this in, this is where grandma okay, steps so in. So the answer is no, I don't even play that right now. I couldn't have a boyfriend until I was 16, but it's fine. Go ahead. And we're um, he's it's um, probably in the dump. With he is so. not. Hi, <laughs> Sheldon Cyrus. I see you out here doing your thing. That was my. You remember Sheldon? He was from Brooklyn. He was Trinidad. He Trinidadian. Where would I? What? What age were you? When? I was like sixteen. It, but he didn't go to Calhoun. No, he went to um graphic art. On I do remember that. Remember name. Sheldon? Yeah, Sheldon is very nice. Hi, Sheldon. I saw I saw something from Nakia earlier. I love Nakia. Where's Nakia? At? Well, she was on this, but on oh. the uh, Instagram. So, so, so last week somebody asked about Idris and the girlfriend, and I just want to go off on a little rant here and say, I don't think that we should be asking 12, 13, 14 year olds about boyfriends, girlfriends. But also, when can Imani I say was- real quick? Can I say something real, real quick? I'm sorry. Because this is the interesting thing as my mom is about to make this important point. There were people like, so when I was on Mary's Medicine, like, we were all on Mary's Medicine in Los Angeles and we were having um, a talk about, you know, like Shanique had given me that weird veiny dildo or whatever mm -hmm. with the plunger bottom or whatever it is. And so people were like, well, you know, like how could you talk to them about that? I'm like, but how how is that more appropriate than y'all trying to like set up romantic things not, with my not son? Not everybody is doing that. There are, no, I mean, not everybody, right. but I'm saying it's very, that's really weird to me. Like there was, there was someone before who was saying about having a granddaughter and it would be nice if they met. And then someone else right. is asking if he had a girlfriend. I would like to just say that I think that it's a good idea to let children be children for a while. Mm -hmm. All this other stuff gets pushed on them pretty quickly. And in spite of a lot of people were completely freaked out about you and me saying the word dildo in front of each other. The real about that stuff. The reality, right. the reality is, is that um, there is no censoring when most of the time they're able to go onto YouTube and other, yeah, um, and and uh, and other digital platforms. So, but in terms of the principles and the way the family operates, um, we don't we don't want to encourage them at this early age to be thinking about that. Uh, it's good to have friends of all genders, 
but I'm not ready for the romantic, hey, pairing up and that kind of stuff. I think that we push our children into that way too soon. It's weird. Plus, you just, um kissed some girl in like third grade and then you got like grounded. So I was like, yeah. Nancy Figueroa asked, what's the best advice your mother gave you? I thought we covered this yeah, last time. Did we did that last time. Oh, what's it? Well, maybe these people weren't here then. No, I know. I'm just trying to think of the best advice my mom gave me. Um, probably to, you know, stay up and um, avoid these haters. Was there a time you followed your mother's advice and then wished you hadn't? Mm. No, well, no, I, I can't. I mean, there are times when, like, let's say there's like an opportunity, and my mom will be like, "Yo, you should do this, this, and this, down and third, and da, 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 da. And but the thing is, is that like when I like when she's trying to hype me up, when she hypes me up, I'm I'm a, like coming guns blazing, like, "Yo, Imani, do this, like, what's up with that?" And she was like, "Okay, I didn't tell you to do all of this, all of that." So, um, you know, I think that there's times when she'll make suggestions, and I won't necessarily do it like immediately or at all. Um, but I mean, that just comes with like being an adult and knowing, um, you know, what's best for me. And um, the corollary, let's talk about the time you didn't follow her advice and you should have. That's from your friend, Vanity Snap. Who's that? That's Alicia. Alicia. Okay. I don't know, but can I say something? Cause we were talking about this before. So um, my, actually, so in 95, I went to Freaknik and um, I hope they know what Freaknik is. Everybody know what Freaknik is. Anyway, Freaknik we, everybody is knows what Freaknik is. It was, it, it was in Atlanta. And this was like the second year of Freaknik. When you're that age, you got to go to Freaknik. So my mom was like, yo, you should go to Freaknik. And I was like, I don't know. Like, I'm at, I mean, I was like, that's even a little too black for me. Because if all y'all who remember Freaknik, remember <laughs> all the like rumors. It was like every year of Freaknik in Atlanta, some girl, remember, used to like, did you hear about that girl that got tossed off the balcony? They were like three. <laughs> to five girls that were getting tossed off a balcony every year, Freaknik. So I was just like, I don't know. Like, I don't know if I really want to do all that because I just come from Harlem. And if you you know about Harlem Week, remember when they used to have stampedes every year <laughs> Harlem Week? I was like, I don't want to deal with that. So anyway, I went to Freaknik. I think Harlem Week was just last week or it's coming up. Yeah, but it's different now because it's like, yeah. yeah. Anyway, Freaknik... Well, it is. It's, Harlem is different because all those white people there. This year is different because it's digital. It's on the oh. Anyway, freak, freak Nick. Harlem we used to be mad finding to all my friends out on the street, but there would always be a stampede because what one black person starts running, we gonna all start running, right? So anyway, I was just kept thinking about stampede. Luckily, there wasn't a stampede at Freak Nick, but I just want to say to the guy whose foot I ran over, I'm sorry, okay? <laughs> I didn't know that you were there, but you were wearing Tim's, so I feel like you was all right. Plus, because I think you went to Morehouse with another HBCU, I'm sure you're doing really well for yourself. And, you know, big up to you. My bad. There was just a lot of people. Um, when you went to Freaknik, was I in New York? Yeah, you were in New York. All right. Yeah, I was so, like, I don't know if I wanted so to So somebody got shot, right? So, uh, I think and there was so. a stampede. There was like the yeah. underground, Atlanta underground. There was some kind of stampede. Yeah, but I didn't go. I didn't go. I went. I was in that area, but I was at right. a different so one. I and had this always, dude licked my neck. I had always told Imani um, <laughs> so from her childhood that uh, we actually did a PSA once about emergency quarter, that a child should always have an emergency quarter. This is the days when they had... Telephones, thought, public telephones, and you had to. You told me about breaking a bottle on it. That was not to hurt somebody. Oh, okay. This was an emergency quarter. So if you ever got separated, kidnapped, whatever, and could get to a pay phone, here's money to call your mother. Mm -hmm. Right. So th th there was that. And the other one was if anything ever happens anywhere in the vicinity where you are, even if you're not involved in it, you have to call me and tell me that you're safe. Mm -hmm. So you were at Freaknik. Yes, I was a freak name. And the girl got shot. And Some, it was a somebody. Stampede. Yeah, I don't even remember. And I was at work at uh, NBC4 in New York. Mm -hmm. And my phone rang. And it was my daughter calling me to say, Mom, I'm not anywhere near where that's going on. I'm about five miles away. And I said, thank you very much. Now I can pay attention to work and not worry. 
But talk about when we were when you were at CCNY at that thing. Okay, I'm gonna answer this question, Fran La. I'm gonna answer your question in a second, but it did get me thinking about something that I did endure when I was I was 15. Set the stage. Okay, Harlem. I was up at City College on 145th and 138th and Compton. Whatever. I took the train on 145th. So, I, so it was me and my friend Christina, <clears throat> who I went to high school with, and so. It, this was 92, this was 92. It was December 28th, two days from my birthday. It was brick outside. It was so cold. So we, there was a celebrity basketball game. Did he? <laughs> there was a celebrity basketball game. And, you know, if you know me, you know that, like, you know, I'm obviously, like, they were putting it, it was everywhere. It was on Kiss. It was on BLS. They were like, yo, it's going to be heavy D. And Puffy, as he was known back then, is they, there's going to be a celebrity basketball game. EPMT is going to be there. Heavy D Boy is going to be there. Um, Dougie Fred, everybody was there. Every everybody was there. It was like it was it was it was going to be mad fun. So we went and waited outside in the cold. Like I think we got there like noon. The game didn't start till like five or six. So, okay, here's what happened. I'm going to try to get this through this really quickly. So you got in. Okay, no, I had to say something first. So we're so I'm like 15. I'm probably way a buck or five, legit wet. Okay, so there were a lot of people that came, and then what happened was um, people started pushing because people weren't getting in to the venue enough. They oversold. The fruit of Islam was there, and then when they came, everybody chilled. But then for some reason, like an hour later, they bounced, and then everybody started wilding out. There was a um like pushing. So there was a, a street lamp like that was like this. Like it was it was really scary. I at one point got picked up so and my feet weren't it, on the ground so anymore. It was the slow movement of a crowd just inching through one forward, door, inching forward. And those doors, there were two of them, right? Um, wait. There were two doors. Hold on, let me tell you what happened. So the plexiglass on the outside actually broke from the floor. So I'm so again, so I so me and my friend get in, Christina. So out, we were like, how much is tickets? They were like twenty dollars, threw twenty dollars down. Ran downstairs, not ran, but we walked downstairs. But there were four doors, okay? Two of them were should have been open, but one was open when we got in. So we got in, we see my friend Azinga Anna. What's up, Azinga Anna? So we were sat down. Legit, like 15 minutes later, I look over and I see somebody like convulsing. Because the doors did not open if the crowd, so, so you had to come down the stairs. They opened outward. And the doors should have opened outward. But they pushed. Opened, right. But you had, they opened inward. So that meant no, once the, the doors opened outward, they should have opened inward. So if somebody pushed it, they could have gotten right. in. So every, so people bum rushed the front and ran past the, the people collecting money for tickets. And then some, somebody at the bottom of the stairs where the gym was closed the door. And then people got trapped and they got trapped. And the, the force of the crowd moving forward, moving forward, plus the momentum from people coming down the stairs meant that there was no ease. They right. were just up against this glass, this wall. Right. And people were crushed and they died. They died. I think Father MC's girlfriend died or something. I think she was pregnant or something. But all these and people uh, died. folks in Harlem, y'all remember this. But in New York City, not just Harlem. So, but. anyway, Dougie Fresh is on the mic and he's like, yo, if you got a cell phone, and these were brick phones. So like, basically, all the hustlers had like brick phones. And so he was like, call 911. Now, again, though, we're in Harlem. You call 911. And as all those people, it took like 21 minutes or something for like a paramedic to get into the venue. By this point, people had died. Now, remember, I don't have no cell phone. I don't have no cell phone. But you had a purse and money. I well, I and did. They got, got separated plus, from them. Plus, I'm I'm a get out, right? So me and my friend, we we bounced and went home. Went and then you know my Tra friend, you bounced. Brown went home. In the meantime, I was at work and the assignment desk, the news department, they said people are get, got killed up at CCNY. I'm like, my daughter Not is at CCNY. Right. And so they radioed the reporters and the crews who were up there that Imani, I was a news director then, I think, I was just a news director. Imani uh, Paul's daughter is there and I was headed up. 
So I got in one of the news crew, the crew cars, and they drove me up. What, by the time I got there, my really good friend, Barbara Walters from Harlem, not that Barbara Walters. So Barbara Walters, I'd asked her to go to my house and sit there and wait to see if Imani was gonna call. Imani got separated from her purse and her money, but you got outside. Did I? I don't remember did, that. And you, and you asked somebody to call right. and call home. And then you called Barbara, Barbara called the newsroom, right. and then the newsroom called me on site to say, Imani is headed home. At that point, I can now focus on trying to get the Because you coverage. said when you got there, you were looking in the, at the well, people in the structure. Well, the police knew that I was coming because of the connections I had right, right. with the news department. And they, they were taking me in the back where they had the bodies laid out and covered. And I was preparing myself for, I'm going to collapse. This is going to be the end of everything. And I didn't get back there. I got called and told Imani was home. But in the meantime, other people's parents were arriving. We are looking for their parents. And it was horrific. It, right. was, it, was, it was dreadful. So I stayed there the rest of the time to help get the coverage underway. And okay, two takeaways real quick, all right. One is, this like I really don't like de dealing with crowds. So go the other way. I, like So if I go somewhere, I always know where the exit is, which is why, super quick story, Essence Fest last year, as much fun as I had, freaked me out, okay? It freaked me out. It was, I, everybody I met was super nice, but like, I can't, like, people were touching me and, okay. And that's why I said you needed, you were going to have the security next time, not to keep you, right. because you're all of that, so, but because it was, people it was, kept trying to get to you, to touch you, they want to hug you, men, women, but... It was, after it was a amount of, after a certain amount of time, when that becomes the pattern, it can get dangerous yeah. for the person on the receiving end of all of that affection. And I want to get to you, right? So, okay. Second takeaway: um, all of y'all who remember that stampede, you can even look it up online. The money was supposed to like go towards the charity, Heavy D and Viddy. That money never materialized. They settled out of out of court or, yeah. or something, yeah. but. Anyway, let's answer. Etrice Thomas says, today is also my son's 12th birthday. Happy I birthday. have to answer somebody's question real quick. Okay, yeah, okay so know. the question is, um, oh, from Fran La, my bad. Would you consider doing a pre-med prep for young people interested in medicine? Yes. Actually, starting in, um, I think it was like 10th or 11th grade, in I was at NYU at this um at this like after school program it met once a week. So basically- My friend Maritza Myers that you were that. Yeah, so we had like a mentor who was also in med school. I don't even know how they did it. Like, thank you to my mentor at med school who took the time out. Um, so it was really for like black and brown students to basically like, you know, hear from other doctors. Doctors would come and like talk to us. It was really informative. Um, so I would just do whatever you could do to just be exposed to, you know, medicine. Even if like, I remember back in the day, like they took us to the morgue and stuff and like, just to kind of, you know, just see what you would be dealing with. I also learned back then when I did this, um, my little internship at high school, there was a doctor who came and she was like, let me tell y'all the real, like you're gonna do a lot of paperwork as a doctor. And let me tell you, she was absolutely right. I hate doing paperwork. I hate doing paperwork. Okay, so to answer your question, yeah, whatever you can find, pre-med prep, whether it's Kaplan also, whether it's like, you know, whatever you can do, like there's like when it comes to med school, like you, let me explain to you guys how a, how a medical school test works, right? When you take a test for something, usually you read the material, boom, and then you go and you answer questions that are you know pretty much like direct reflections of what you've read, okay? Med school tests are not like that. They assume that you know the, the information like the back of your hand. Then they ask you questions that you then have to do stuff based upon what you supposedly should be an expert at. It was terrible, but if you're motivated and you really want to be a doctor like I did, that, you know, that's what you do. So, you know, it's, you, there's a certain frame of mind that you have to be in when you are uh, in medical school and studying to be a doctor. One of the things that I used to say a lot about, like, let's say my son's generation of kids is that because they have been exposed to so much technology, they know how to think in three, and three dimensions. dimensions. Right. I grew up with 2D. 
So when they were like, okay, so, so think of the skull and then sagittal section, coronal section, transverse section, like this is, this is dorsal, but it's also anterior. Your thumb, you guys can't see, but like a body in medicine goes like this, right? So my thumb is always lateral. Your pinky is always medial. When really, you know, when you stand up as a person, like you like this, right? So it's a it's a whole it's a whole thing, and it required a lot of um, you know, I had to really like just visualize things in a way that I had never been able to visualize things before. And I think like, it's good to just be exposed to as much stuff so that when you do get to med school, you know, it's going to be a shock, but at least you'll, you won't like freak out. Like I kind of did. <laughs> Cause I, my first, my first class was anatomy. And I was like, um, question, do I need to know all of this? Or like, just tell me what I need to know, because this is a lot of stuff. And they were like, Imani, if you don't go somewhere and read or learn something. So anyway, so, um, uh, I want to go back to Alicia Vanity Snob asking whose mom says go to Freaknik and she's the LA LMAO. So listen, um, you have to experience life and you have to encourage your children to not be the weird kid. You know, what's also, the, what's I used to go to the West Indian Day Parade like every year. And I know you'd be going, do you go to the West Indian Day Parade, Alicia? You should. My aunt was like, you're a daughter of Jamaica. How could you not go? Exactly. I mean, it's just stuff culturally that you have to experience. What's up, Danielle? Nikon, what, Danielle is my, my one of my best friends from med school. Danielle St. Leger. Yes. Nikon, that's <laughs> New York <laughs> College of Osteopathic Medicine, was hell. Um, I had a panic attack before the pathology exam, but I did really well. <laughs> Like we we used to camp out in the uh, in the study room, and we used to um, hide from this um, West Indian um, security guard who would like yell at us to get out. <laughs> but oh one of our friends, he will remain unnamed, went and took his keys out of his truck and threw them in the. Pot. It was the best thing ever. Anyway, um, oh. Real quick, I just want to mention when it comes to the previous question that I was answering that I am going to be doing some webinars on these types of things. So, okay, so go ahead with which uh, Freaknik thing. Oh, I just that, uh, you know, you, I think that you should, you know, have your kids experience. But listen, I was a, I was a kid who grew up in Harlem on welfare. We ran the streets regularly and often. And it has, uh, I think, a lot to do with character, depending upon where you live and what else is going on. I mean, but you can't be the person who wraps your kid up in cotton and the kid never gets to do stuff. I mean, Dries of late, you've been taking him to where? We are meaning, uh, bye Demario, have a good evening. He said he had to go. Um, me and Idris have been kicking it real hard. And so we've just been going downtown. Um, I really wasn't like a huge fan of downtown when I first moved to LA. I mean, why would I? Like I came from New York and I really wasn't. So I was trying to see palm trees and beaches, but now there's not a whole lot of people. Um, you know, downtown is actually kind of fun. And, you know, I think one of the things that I also kind of wanted to get my son accustomed to, even though this sounds weird, is like being around people who are like homeless. Because I... Primarily, because they're people. They're people, and I primarily deal with them, and I'll be saying hi to them. They'd right. be like, hi, I'd be like, hey, y'all. I mean, like, I grew up in a city environment, so it wasn't a big thing to me. But to Idris, who, you know, is grew up in L.A. only, like, I need for him to, you know, just experience city life. And I, I kind of feel like, I mean, if you if if you could, like, take the train and just go all over the place anywhere you wanted to, would you go? You would, because it's fine. Well, I think I think that he had a really great time a few years ago when he was in New York with his bio dad and taking the subway and cabs and stuff like that. Yeah, and fine. you know, the rhythm of the city is something that I think that if you come from a family that's a family of the city, your kids should have some exposure to that. Yeah. So I think that for 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 Idris, I would I like hearing that you're taking him downtown and he's seeing yeah. the world not from the front seat of a car all the time. Yeah. Because, because you know, it, it's hard to have empathy. It's hard to have empathy for people when people are always being over there or mm -hmm. you're seeing them 
you know, through the back seat of a car or the front seat of a car. The the thing about growing up in New York, and I'm not saying that everybody should have done that, but what I I will say that it throws people together, no matter what income level, no matter what race, no matter what interest. You're going to end up on streets, in the subway, on the bus, waiting for a cab together, and it forces you to interact with people who are not. I had to kind of like learn you. Spanish a little bit in New York because people who spoke Spanish were asking for directions. So finally, I was like, okay. I know um, Subway Spanish. Yeah, I know Bodega Spanish. Right, right, so, right. you know. Um, so anyway, somebody asked a question, and I don't remember what it is. Okay, here we go. Look, Cleon asked, Paula, excluding family members, Kamala Harris and yours truly, Kamala, sorry, Kamala. Kamala Harris and yours truly, who has been your greatest inspiration? My parents. Okay. Yeah, my parents. Did you notice that my shirt says my black is beautiful? Rasheen, I think that's your name. Rasheen Richardson asked me, um, Dr. Imani, what lesson, if any, have you taken away from a client? That's a good question. That is a good question. Um, two things. One is that, you know, I'm I'm just, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty much a humble person. I don't really like... Um, I mean, I make fun of myself all the time. I just think, you know, taking yourself too seriously is really whack. And it does make you a weird person. And it does alienate you from regular people. Um, but I think, um, despite the fact that I like working with the population of people that I deal with, I definitely am very grateful at the end of every day when I get to, you know, be, come home or get, you know, leave my office upstairs where I, you know, see patients now. Um, you know, te be a telemedicine because, you know, these are people who, I mean, yes, they, they're sick and they may have committed some really like, you know, heinous crimes, but they have done the work in order to, you know, get better and try to reintegrate themselves to society. So I'm just really grateful that, you know, I never had to experience that. But also there's one thing that when I was, um, when I was a resident at Temple University in Philly, uh, my program director was like, yo, like if, if a patient gives you a present, like you need to give it back. But here's the thing, right? Like I deal with people who have like no money. Some of these people are like living out of their cars, right? And so if somebody, like when I was pregnant with Idris, I had patients who like had no money and they would like take two buses or three buses just to come to like my appointment. And they were like, oh, I got you this mug because with strawberries on it. Right, they and care. I'm not gonna you be like, oh. That. Yeah, so I mean. You gotta try to figure out how to give them something that if you know they don't have whatever, right, right then maybe you, you give them a sandwich or maybe you give them, you know, a something that doesn't mean, hey, I'm going to humiliate you by 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 giving you back a small gift you gave me. Yeah. The the meaning in that is so great and it's so touching that you could really crush someone by returning a yeah. gift like that. So I I was shaking my head only because I think I I knew where you were going and yeah. I was like yeah no 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 you it's situational it it depends on. It depends on that person, what the circumstances are. The circumstances are, and you know, it's important to be kind. It's important to be kind to people and not have ironclad rules that say no, you can't do this, and no, right. you can't do that, because and also you because mean you mean you mean a lot to them, and you meant a lot to them, and you know, and, and sometimes when I'm downtown, like sometimes if I'm like, I'm not on Skid Row as much anymore, I'm not work there anymore. But sometimes when I'm downtown, I do see some of my patients. And I'm like, hey, what's up? They're like, hey, Dr. Walk. I'm like, hey, what's up? Um, so yeah, I just, you know, I, and sometimes honestly, because my birthday is um, the day before New Year's Eve, and so like nobody cares. <laughs> when it's my patient's birthday, like I get hype. I'm like, yo, what you want? Like, I'll hook you up. Not like, you know, I don't get them locked up. And I'm like, pick one thing that you really want. And, you know, like, if I can make it happen, I'll make it happen. So my friend, Pat Jane, Pat Jordan, she was James in college. Remember when you waited on the long line with the people to see Patty LaBelle at Canaan Church instead of using your press credentials? Yeah, I mean, I had press credentials and I had connections and the hookup and I could do all kinds of stuff. But sometimes, 
you just don't want to do that. And even when, when I when I worked at, at NBC and I had a company car and the you know mm -hmm. parking garage right across the street, which was as much as somebody you know the rent for the car was as much as some people's apartment rent. Um, but sometimes I would you know we lived on 119th Street in Harlem and I would take the subway. Well, which, I mean, because uh, I and mean, I take the bus, yeah. and, I, and I had a company car, but that wasn't the point. The point was, how do I reflect? How do I share and put on the news what people's lives are like if my life is spent in the back of a limousine? But also, how dumb would it be if you like? Because you used to walk to the D train on Hunslet Street and just take the D to um to um, Rockefeller Rock Center, right. right? Like, how? Why would you drive? No, no, no. Because That's stupid. Well, a lot of people would drive because they don't want to take the subway and sit next to or stand next to people who they don't know or the same kind of people who you were just describing, right? But on the other hand, on the other hand, how do you tell stories about where the homeless are being right. forced to live? Right. How do you tell stories about you know commuter traffic and the fact that you know I had a boss who who came from Iowa who asked. You know, as I said to him, he said, oh, well, I, you know, I want to go up to 125th Street. And I was like, OK, uh, I'm going to take this white dude on the train. Yeah, OK. And he let's said, go. well, you know, I can have my car and driver. I was like, no, no, no. Let, let's take the subway. Ain't nobody care so about you we, anyway. We took we went downstairs to the platform. And he was like, geez, it's hot. Where's the air conditioning? And I was like, well, we don't really have air conditioning on the platforms. People do this every day. Remember how somebody would yes, always fall sometimes in the fall train and die um, in on Grand Central, yeah. like every summer because it would be too hot. Yeah. So, but you know, you have to be able to share the experience of the people, the people, the yeah. people, so that what you can do is not demonstrate an elitism. Yeah. Right. right. Uh, and so that's. And I just want to say, I'll take this moment to say that I'm very proud of you for um, having being awesome. Thanks. Well, <laughs> I wasn't going to say that. Okay. But having the the desire, the push. I didn't want you to do reality TV, but you wanted to because you said you'd be able to talk about mental health here yeah. in a way that um, most people are not, and, and you're doing that, and I and I'm very happy. And Thanks, very mom. High five. Okay. Um, here's a question. I, it's the Prozac, sorry. Oh, um, Urban Myers, question. Okay, question. This is for you. I'm a stylist. So, what's the best fashion advice your mom gave you, or what trend did you adopt from her? Happy birthday, by the way. You are so fabulous. Okay. Thank you. Um, one of my friends' name is Urban, too. He's a good friend of mine. Mm -hmm. um, what's the best fashion advice my mom gave me? Um, you know what? A, that um, I love sales. Sales are great. Um, when I, we lived in New York, we used to go to um, the caucus and Woodbury Commons and Statue 21. You downtown for the sample sales. Yeah. And, you know, honestly, I think that, um, you know, I would, I, I think one of the things that, I don't know if my mom specifically said it, but like just being able to express my individuality was really important. Um, as far as like my fashion choices, I mean, they weren't all, they weren't great all the time, but I was comfortable in them. And I think that what was, in, what's been interesting about being in LA is that a lot of people, I mean, obviously, especially a lot of people on the East coast, it's like, ugh, LA is so whack. The thing about LA is that LA really kind of like wants you to think that it's one way and that everyone's kind of like very homogenous but when you get here and you really start to learn how to move around it's actually like it's actually a lot of fun and you start to really like yeah it's different and you start to kind of like see all the different you know types of groups of people and niches and so it's not it's not really what you think it is on TV. In fact, I would kind of say that, you know, New York is very upfront with its griminess, but LA is like really under with its griminess. And that's really where the inspiration for Guns N' Roses, Welcome to the Jungle, really kind of came from. Because people think it's, oh, it's Beverly Hills and blah, blah, blah. And then you get here, it's like, oh, this is grimy as hell. Um, okay, here is another question. Is, from, is it Tyan or Tian? Is being an introvert curable? Is it healthy to be an introvert? I lost friends because of it. I just don't get why people won't accept me as I am. 
Um, I'm a, I'm an introvert, honestly. I mean, I know I'm on reality TV and all of that, but like, I really, I'm like this whole staying at home situation. I was like, oh, cool, because that's my lifestyle anyway. Like, I really just, I'm at home most of the time. Um, I, you know, I don't know if if introversion is something that necessarily needs to be cured because mm-hmm. growing up, I really, um. I mean, I'm someone who is very content with being by myself. I don't necessarily need to have people around me in order to feel like I'm okay. So when I got old enough, people were like, oh my God, I would never go to the movies by myself. I would never go eat by myself. I'm like, I would take myself on dates all the time. Yeah, I I, I also, there was a part of that sentence, I think that said she lost friends mm-hmm. by being an introvert. They're not, how maybe they're not friends. Maybe they weren't friends. You know, maybe, yeah. maybe the good part about that is that it helps you you know, sort of uh, separate the wheat from the chaff, so to speak. Because you could be an introvert, and yeah, and why would I, I? I can't imagine. I'm trying to think of how somebody being an introvert would make me not be their friend, uh, but I can't think of that. I just kind of think maybe your former friends were raggedy, and you need to like do some introspection so you can really know what you want and what would suit you best in a friend. You know what? Pursue the things that are going to make you happy, mm-hmm. and you might find other people who share those same interests. Uh, and by the way, I've been married to my husband for thirty plus years now, and we have a lot of very different interests. We don't do a lot of the same things, and that's okay because uh, I find what he does makes him happy, and I find it interesting, but not so interesting that I want to do it. So, I, I want to do my own stuff. So y'all aren't the couple that like I used to see like walking down Lennox Avenue where like like she she had the the top like they would buy one sweatshirt like him and her no, right like she would wear the top and like he would wear the bottom. I like, would throw I myself to, in front of a movie I, car I before I that. that. I used to love that. Like or we go to New Orleans and, the, and they have on red. It's a couple and they both got on red shirts and black pants because they go into the state fair or something. It's like. Okay, wait. Y'all I love that? stuff like that. Uh, I, I mean, I don't really do it, but like, I kind of like. Yeah, it no. always makes me real happy because it's just so black, and we just be like, we out here, so what? Yeah. Um, okay, Philippe so, is asking Miss Paula, what was your favorite part of working in media? Um, so there's entertainment media, which I worked in, and there's news media, which I also worked in. So I'm going to answer the question from the news media perspective. I grew up at a time and in a place where I actually lived in New York when the first black anchor, news anchor, was on air. Who's that? So Melba Tolliver. Um, Melba Tolliver used to be though. an assistant at a- WABC, which is now ABC7. And when the riots happened, like in the 60s and all, they started looking around. You know, <laughs> we all a the black newsroom. person. Oh, where's, where's she every at? newsroom everywhere. Where's she Newspapers. At? <laughs> TV stations, they were like, because who are they going to send out there? Mm-hmm. Right. You got to, you know, so I, and I met her and I told her what a, what a, you know, what a icon she was to me. And we, we became friendly, um, you know, and it was John Johnson and, and um, there, there weren't a lot of them back then, but the ones who were there let me know that the way they got their start was by go, coming into my community and communities like mine, where ordinarily there would be no news coverage unless somebody was being carried out in a body bag, right? And so for me, the but best they'd be part, like this, but they would like they'd right, be getting arrested, right. heads covered, and you know, the best part for me of being in the news, being a journalist, truly was. Doing newscasts from the perspective of people, regardless of their income, their race, and what part of New York they lived in. And I got to be news director. I'm meaning I ran the news department for NBC4, and in one year, every newscast was number one. Uh, And that hadn't happened in 16 years. And I made a point of finding reporters who either were from a community or who had lived in that community, because not everybody should live in Midtown Manhattan, um, which is what was really going on. So I found people 
this amazing brother, John Noel, who originally was from Brooklyn. I hired him from St. Louis, Missouri, brought him back to cover Brooklyn, and he killed it. Oh, look he at this. Killed it. This says Melba Toller is best remembered for her defiant stance against w ABC, against WABC, but she refused to don a wig or a scarf to cover up her afro. Yeah, she had an afro back then. Wow. Uh, and the days when you could not be on the air uh with hair or in, in your case not hair but you and you couldn't have hair like mine I, but even when i worked at, at nbc you University, had a perm for a minute though i did and as soon as i moved well let me finish so, so i worked at nbc universal when ge owned us and i remember so i was also a ge vice president and we had a annual or biannual conference of um, african-american um employees and maybe about 1500 1600 would go and I remember when I left working at 30 Rock where my hair was relaxed. And as soon as I hit out here, I cut all my hair off and I was wearing it like this. Did they ask you something wrong? With well, you? when I went back to 30 Rock, I could see the look on their faces like, uh oh, is she mal mowing out? Like what? Like, like what? And, and I was all ready. And I said, oh my God, living in Los Angeles is so amazing. I have a swimming pool now. And when I get up in the morning and I swim, it's so much easier to swim if I leave my hair like this. And white folks would be like, oh, okay, that makes sense. They weren't scared, right? Right? They weren't, they weren't scared. like, oh, okay. Uh, I had a pool, I wouldn't swim in it every morning. That was crap. I was cutting my hair off and I was going. Why didn't you, why wasn't you just like, because that's what I wanted to do. Because you were trying to. No, no, no. Well, it, exactly that. I mean, I, there's this experience I had, and I, some of these people may remember, however many years ago, Bryant Dumbo mm -hmm. went to Africa. I don't remember he, that. He was live in Africa for a week, mm -hmm. and he took his son with him, and he was, you know, it was an amazing series. And it was an amazing series, and Bryant Dumbo, while he was in Africa, decided to not shave. So I was in my office, I was assistant news director, and the general manager was saying to me, oh, I gotta go upstairs to the meeting to the big boys, you know, the guys who run everything. And I was like, okay, and he said, yeah, they're worried about Bryant. And I said, what does that What's mean? What's he supposed Why to do in Africa? Bryant? And they were like, well, they're very concerned because he's got hair all over his face, he's grown a beard. And I was like, and? I was like saying to myself, Paula, handle this well, because this I know is your a, face Show this, everything. This was a seminal moment. And I said, What concerns them? Well, you know, white people are afraid of black people with black men with beards. I my face really changed. my face That's a thing? my face didn't change. And I said, Oh, okay. I said, um, and I said, and what are they concerned about? Well, they're very worried that he's there and something's happening. <laughs> And I said, okay, let me explain to you what's happening. And by the way, I know Brian. I have never told him this story. Okay. And I said, I, saw Brian, Brian, I almost said Brian McGumble. I said, <laughs> um, I said, well, black men, black people have curly hair, many of us. And when black men shave, the razor makes the tip sharp and it curls and goes back into their skin. I said, and they have these things called hair bumps, Raise it on. they're inflamed. And he said, he was like, and I pointed out someone whose name I'm not gonna say, I said, who has hair bumps all under his chin. I said, you seen that? He said, yeah, what is that? I said, that's inflammation. I said, dermatologists advise many black men, take a few weeks off, let your face relax and let it heal and let, let, your the, hair, face relax. let the hair grow out. <laughs> and I said, Bryant is doing that while he's in Africa. And I said, and I promise you, when he comes back, he'll be here for a day or two and then he'll shave. And so my boss was like, really? I said, yeah. I said, you can assure them that it doesn't mean that anything's happening. So he went upstairs, told these white people this. They didn't do anything about Brian. Brian came back from Africa and as I predicted, shaved. And I got called upstairs to the 52nd floor to a meeting, like, thank you so much for letting us know that that's what that was. And I was like, y'all are a trip. Well, and I never told Brian Gumbel this, because that would it would have been like, he was the leading anchor 
And they were thinking about doing what? So they were scared because he did what? He drew a beard. Okay, so here's um here's the question. Yeah. Um oh okay, did you have oh did you happen to uh watch the DNC? I didn't. Um, I, 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 I didn't. I didn't. But I it looked it looked good. Like I, I saw the I recap. Do them like that forever. I kinda liked it like that. Like, especially when everybody like was in their state and they was the like state roll call right, was, they was, was like, yo, it, I'm it was in Maine. Yo, I'm in Rhode Island. It was What's amazing. Up with? Yeah, I thought you I thought it was really nice. The diversity of this country and everybody got up got had a voice. It was great. So did, so how did you okay, so how you feel about your friend Kamala Harris? I didn't. I didn't see her remarks or anything. Oh, she was great. I, she was great. I thought she was wonderful. Okay. I, you know, like I, you know, I, I, you know, I've been a supporter of hers forever. I will continue to be. Right. Yeah. Um. Somebody asked, Doctor Imani. Oh, here it is. Uh, C. Lorraine Jefferson, Doctor Imani. I am an MFT in training, and I'm curious to know what is the session like in psychiatry. Um, it kind of, it. I'm just laughing at that. Yeah, Rhode Island with the best calamari. Yeah, I saw that on the roll call. Um, Are we over time? Yeah, it's it's six oh six. Um, okay, so I forgot the question now. The question, Brandon, can you put it back up real quick? I'm sorry, I got confused. Okay, here it is. For the MFT. Oh, what MFT. what is what is the session in psychiatry like? Um, you know what? It really depends. It really depends on. Is it, is it inpatient psychiatry, which is in the hospital? Is it outpatient psychiatry, like in a clinic? Is it residential um, outpatient psychiatry where like I'll go see a patient and they live in the facility and basically all of their clinicians will come to them, let's say, because we have our own separate offices in the building. Um, it, it really kind of depends. I would say when it comes to inpatient psychiatry, um, the, they'll, those tend to be the most intense sessions, I guess, because those are people who um, usually I deal with people who have been involuntarily um, uh, sent to the hospital for evaluation and treatment because they were doing something that um, was a danger to themselves or a danger to others. They weren't able to provide food, clothing, and shelter for themselves. Um, it really depends upon whether it's a higher level of care, which would be inpatient, and everything else is a lower level of care. Um, but I think, you know, with the patients that I deal with, I have to be kind of like really direct. Like, did you brush your teeth today? Did you take a shower? Like, you know, clean. If you, you know, sometimes they need to be told very things very concretely, like the way you kind of talk to like a three or a four year old, like you cannot have snacks in your room because now you have ants all over your room. limits. Yeah. So you, so I'm really big on, but one of the things that I'm really big on just in life in general is boundaries. And if you're going to be a mental health clinician or a psychiatrist like me, you know, I mean, like, I don't have to always be stank about it. I'm just like, you know what? I really would appreciate if you, you know, like just give me like, you know, take like a couple steps back. Okay. Boom. What were you saying? Somebody's so, looking for a referral to look, to find a therapist, an African-American therapist for a 19 year old black male. Is it the same website that you were mentioning? Before? I did mention before, which is therapy for black girls.com. Um, that is actually a really good website. Even for boys, even for boys, even right. Even for boys. Um, you can also try psychology today, but here's the thing: when you go on psychology today, and you and you like, or if you Google search African American therapists in my area, Psychology Today, I think, is uh, a website that maybe like they pay to have Google kind of promote. So I've gone on there to look for African American therapists, and all these white people show up. So I don't know like what's going on with Psychology Today's filter, mm -hmm. but I will go to Black. Um, therapyforblackgirls.com because you can see their faces and they, you can search by location, zip code, and all that stuff. Okay, so somebody has asked if Idris has something to say. Yeah, Idris, do you have anything to say? Are you just chilling? I'm just kidding. Yeah, you're just chilling. Like, y'all, like, what's Idris about? I'm like, Idris is just. This is what he does. This is what he does. Except Idris, when he's with Grandpa. Idris is like, very, right. very, they're very talkative. Idris is mad show. Um, Dr. Imani, what's the best way to handle someone who teases or says rude things to people who choose therapy for help? I don't know. You can tell them to kick rocks. I mean, it's like, Jesus. look. Yeah, I mean, I, here's the thing. It is going to sound messed up to some of y'all, but like, <laughs> you know my mom and then you know me. 
I, I like don't, to make people afraid. To yeah, I don't really care it's about like, people's yeah. opinions. I'm like, okay, and like, I do feel better. Okay, great, I'm out. Like, I, I mean, I think that sometimes the best response is no response, and then sometimes the well, people, no response with a look. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, oh, word. Okay, then. So, like, all right, thanks. Like, I just, I like to just kind of make people feel stupid. Again, boundaries. And sometimes, like, you know, you don't have to get loud and scream on somebody. You can just be like, oh, okay. All right, then. And just be out. Um, I, but I do think that, again, it's also important to, you know, normalize mental health and mental illness. And sometimes it, that normalizing can mean that, you know, you got to diss somebody. Like, if they try to diss you, you got to diss them even harder. Like, okay, now you see how stupid you look? So don't of, do that again. One of my favorite ways to disarm foolishness, and sometimes racism, uh, and I may have said this before, is when somebody says something to you, you pause and look at them very pointedly and ask, did you mean to say that to me? And just wait. And it may produce a giggle. It may produce, a, oh, 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 well, well, it may produce or they a might, laugh, Or they or might they say might, the same thing they again. Might, they might stand there, you know, stand their ground with it. And then in which case I would probably say, so you did mean to say that. You weren't accidentally stupid. Okay, I got it. <laughs> I'm good with that. Right, yeah. And then, you know, but the, see, that's a part of what I was saying earlier about making sure that your, your children are exposed to different people so that you learn how to handle stuff. It's like sitting on the subway and the crazy dude sitting across from me, you know. Want to flash me. Well, he's flashing, you know. He's, he's, he lifts up the newspaper when every, almost everybody's gone and he's, his, like his a, penis like is a exposed, congratulation. Right? And I call her me to, point and, to laugh. point and laugh. Like, oh, <laughs> oh. That's what I did. And they get up and run. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, that's not the expect. It's like, uh, you, what was that? Yes. So right. I think that you just have to figure out how <laughs> to, <laughs> you got to figure out how to handle situations. And sometimes if you're fortunate, like I was and had two older brothers, if somebody really bigger and threatening, just tell them to wait, just hang on, you wait right there. Mm -hmm. And you come back with your, with your crowd. And your crowd beats the hell out of them. And right. that's good. That gets around. Brandon said, tell the pregnancy story. What pregnancy story? My pregnancy story? Is it my mother's pregnancy no, story? No, you said to cleaver? somebody in a comment, like, oh, on Monday, I'm going to tell you about my pregnancy story. I was like, why are we talking about my pregnancy story? Ooh, I don't remember. Okay, good. Because, I mean, I okay. You know what happened? What? Real quick. What? So when Nuvering first came out, it was supposed to be refrigerated up until like when I received it. So I, I, I was on the pill. What is that, a Nuver Yeah, it's a contraceptive. So I switched from the pill to Nuvering because it was new and everybody was like, this is dope and you don't have to take pills no more. So anyway, you know, I got pregnant on Nuvering and so here he drinks. Yeah. But also I'm a firm well, believer I got, that- I got kids, pregnant on an IUD and no, there's him No, you could use, use a did. diaphragm. Oh yeah, it was a diaphragm. Sure. I got pregnant on a diaphragm. So, I mean, but the, the take home is that, you know, kids will come when they want to come, even when there's like a low percentage of them, you know, potentially like being born, like they'll come when they want to come. And I mean, was I ready to be a mom? Like, no, <laughs> but I mean, you, you work it out. Yes, happily. Yeah. Are we going to have our dance? Are you playing music? Yay. Well, I have to open Spotify first. Well, I'll open Spotify, and in the meantime, oh, there's something else I'm supposed to mention before Brandon. Oh, um, wait, did they leave? No, this is just Spotify. Hold on, I don't know if I can do it like that. Oh no, I can't. Sorry, y'all. Okay, so listen. Is Spotify online? So somebody, so um, one of the questions that um I got is, hey, what am, what is Imani eating right now? Um, you know what? Imani's kind of like doing her. <laughs> I'm going to stop referring to myself in the third person. Um, I'm honestly, I mean, I what am I eating with you? We were eating oysters the other day. Mm -hmm. um, we were getting dinner at home and we were eating plantains. And yeah, I mean, I I just started working out like from back from four days a week to six days a week, and um, because I just feel better, so I've just been more hungry. So I've just kind of been on carbs, like. Oh, yeah, I've been eating donuts. I've been eating bagels because I got a headache yesterday. I've been getting headaches because because my body's consuming itself. So I was like, oh, 
I, I'm mm-hmm. seventy because I'm working out more, so like my metabolism is higher. Oh, and you're not eating enough food, and that's where you're getting it. Yes, yeah, oh. so, and I didn't know that, so I was like, okay, like oh, so I'm about to eat these bagels, yay! So yeah, so so um, so but I just got a oh, I just got an air fryer yesterday. It was on sale on Amazon. Did you and, all see my air fryer plantings? And so I made and plantings today in my air fryer. Listen, I was really kind of concerned that the plantings weren't turned out right because it it was like it, the plantings were ready, but like they weren't like, you know, when you open them up and they're kind of like, you could see the sugar. But like, listen, listen, plantings in the air fryer. Oh my God. Like I, I ate two plantings by myself today. For those of you who watch me on Facebook, you know, I posted about that around five weeks ago. I probably had 400 people saying, what? Air fryer plantings. Oh my God. I got to do it. Okay. And then Danielle asked me, how's my knee? You know what? Thank you for asking Danielle. My knee's getting better. And that's actually why I started working out a little bit more because I think my knee muscles were um, like the, the muscles surrounding my knee were a little bit weak. And so now it's better. So I, I might actually start running again, but it's been way too humid here and I can't do all of that. At least you said salmon is trash fish. It's salmon is good. Salmon and I'm is, not listening what to what happened to the omega sixes that threes. are threes that are in salmon. The omega twelves. Lambda, lambda, lambda and omega moon. You know what you should do. Do you know what that's from? No. Revenge of the Dirt. I didn't watch that. That's your ear. That listen, Revenge of the Nerds is the jam. All right, what what you want to dance to? All the, these guys are. Kind of, you can pick your own. I don't care. I know. I mean, you know what I'm. I'm, I'm, I'm multi, you know, you know I'm what multi- I'm generational. I can slide. Okay, fine. Way. You know what? I'm gonna play my song real quick. Um, so, who was my favorite musical genius of all time? James Brown. You know what? We can we can play doing it to death. No, we don't have to play that. I want to play doing it. Who's my other favorite? Prince. Mm-hmm. Doing it to what you okay, so what you want to play from Prince? I'm I mean, I'm a big fan of Erotic City, but I'm gonna play um oh hold on. Right, Alexa, play Spotify. I was gonna say who's Alexa? Okay. There's another person back there.